Welcome. This is our part two series of edible and medicinal plants in the wild. In this video, we will discuss an additional 15. This will bring us to a total of 29 edible plants in the wild discussed thus far. Here are just uh, some caution, be aware of allergies, ensure that all plants you gather are free of pesticides or herbicides, and if you are not 100% sure of the plant, do not consume. And you know, this is a hobby of mine, and so one of the things that I've been doing to help me uh, to be very proficient in these plants is I start gathering them in a section in containers where I can further examine the features. So this is a good way in which you can just familiarize yourself with them. But I do enjoy just going into the field and identifying um, different species of plants and knowing their benefits. Thank you for subscribing. Please feel free to leave your questions or comments below. View of the briar, and here we have that young shoots which is edible. You can boil it or you can eat it raw. In that case, and it is. And also remember the brute, the bulbs also are edible. Those are rich in starch. So here is another close-up of the briar plant. Now this one, these ones have tendrils. So if you can see carefully, here's an example of the tendrils. And here you have the shoots, which also is pretty edible. Now this one is more established. And so you can see a great differentiation between the one that I'm first showed. Um, the leaves are will be appearing shortly, but this is what it looks like when it first when it's first appearing after the spring and again remember these are quite edible you can imagine since this one was undisturbed you can we get a great source of bulb from the bottom which from the ground which as previously mentioned is rich in starch so again remember these are what we call the tendrils so look out for these also as you search for the briar vine. So this is what the tuber of the briar looks like. And there are many ways in which this can be prepped. You could slice it in thin slices and it could be fried or you could boil it. And there are many options, but it's like a starch like a potato and they come really bigger than this this one was here I was I had some wood trips here and I was I was removing the wood trip for the raised beds and I happened to um, come across this one so they have some very unique features so you will definitely not mistake it for something else So the green briar vine, they love to grow in trees and shrubs. They're in abundance during the spring. You could eat the young shoots as I showed you in that video of the vine. You can eat them raw. The tendrils could be eaten as well. Uh, they could be served cooked or steamed. Pretty much they taste like green beans. The underground tubers, which you saw in that last video, um, is a source. They are a source of starch and they can be boiled or fried and also these plants if you're lucky enough if you 
see some that are established that are undisturbed there are these berries that can be eaten that may be eaten or you could use them to make jams also just to note the um the green bar vine the leaves and the stems are rich in vitamins and minerals they are prominent in forested areas when harvesting you should ensure that the vine have both the tendrils the thorns and tendrils and you can also see that in one of those vid prior videos uh, in this presentation the vines they also have thorns and two tendrils at the base of the leaves so these are just some of the features Next plant we would like to look at is the sheep sorrow. Okay, again, this is a close up view of the sheep's sorrow. All parts of this plant are edible. The seeds you could roast, the leaves, the stems. It has a, a sourish taste, which is due to the oxalic acid. Remember, used in moderate quantities. One of the things that you know I hope to look at as a future research is the use of oxalic acid in the treatment of or fighting cancer. But on a regular basis, just for regular eating, you want to do, as I mentioned, in small quantities the sheep sorrel is rich in vitamins minerals and protein the leaves and seeds are edible and are better when cooked it has a lemony or tangy flavor some health benefits include strengthening the heart cancer remedy treating fevers and inflammation and helping with digestive problems it is used in salads, soups, or teas. Be careful if should not be used if pregnant. And those individuals with kidney stones or arthritis should not use it, especially the fact, as explained, it's rich in oxalic acid and that could form with milk forming calcium oxalate, which could further enhance kidney stones. So the next plant here shown is the wood sorrel. These have a light purple flowers. That is how you could distinguish them. The wood sorrel, it has leaves that are heart shaped. The tubers could be any color of the rainbow. Now this is the it is rich in oxalic acid, so you, if used with milk, again, it will make calcium oxalate, so drink plenty of water. The tubers and leaves could be eaten raw, steamed, or stewed, and it's also rich in vitamins A and C. This is the pine tree, and we've seen them all over, but we never thought of the medicinal value that they possess. We are all familiar with the pine tree, but many of us are not aware of its vast potential benefits. Many parts of the pine tree are useful. The pine needles could be used as an antiseptic. The needles also could be used to make a tea. It is rich in vitamin C and antioxidants. Now there are many varieties of pine trees, so it's very important to note that there are few pine trees that are toxic. You should therefore consult with a qualified herbalist before using
so the cut is the way you can differentiate it from the dandelion is that it has these here strands and both sides it's hairy on both sides and that's how you can tell the difference between the cut hairs and the dandelion okay. so here's a upward view of this plant the cat's ear plant can be eaten or cooked and just like dandelion, you can use the roots to make coffee. This plant is also rich in minerals and antioxidants. Medicinally, the leaves and roots could be used as a sedative. The dewberry is one of my favorite plants. And by now, you recognize this popular edible plant in the wild. So this is an entire field of the dewberry here at the homestead. And here they are all over. Here you see them on this side also. So it's a whole bunch. So they're easy to recognize. And remember, you can use the leaves, you could dry the leaves and it makes a great tea. The flowers are all also edible, but you don't want to save the flowers for the fruits. And so you can just use the leaves. So this is a blackberry patch. Now in the last video I do mention that and I had a real nice one with big leaves. These are small, these are just um, springing. But here is how you can tell the difference between the dewberry and the blackberry. So the blackberry are stand, they stick straight and upright. Whereas the dewberries, they run as vines. And I think I could find some dewberries over here. Now here is another patch of the wild plums. I'm almost there. Let's see if there's some more right here. And we are approaching some more of the dewberries so the leaves may look different but this is here are the dewberries and you see that they're actually running as vines so the dewberry both the flowers and the fruit are edible but you may not want to eat the flowers because if your preference is the fruits, you could also make a tea with the flowers or the young leaves. Um, it is said that it, the tea tastes better if you allow those leaves to dry first. The food is rich in carbohydrates and vitamin C and a trace of minerals. The roots and leaves could be used to treat diarrhea and skin inflammation. These perennials are armed with prickers, so be very careful. So here, this is an example of the wax murder plant, and they're widely used in landscaping. So it's good to know that they have some benefits in cooking. Smoky, hey Smoky. So the wax murder which is also called bayberry its leaves are used as a seasoning it's said to be rich in antioxidants the root bark possesses medicinal qualities as uh, for sore throat and 
for urinary tract infection. So here we have a field of clovers and here is a close-up view of what it looks like. Now they're mostly three leaves. They said if you're lucky you'll find one with four leaves. But this is the here what it looks like. Then you could make tea with the flowers. You could boil the leaves. Use as your greens. And they're very easy to identify wherever they are. The leaves, flowers, and roots are edible. You could boil for 10 to 15 minutes and then proceed to eat. It is rich in protein, minerals, vitamins A, B, and C. It is widely used to treat ailments by Native Americans in the past. The leaves are eaten cooked. Its leaves have the chevron markings and so that will make you make sure you're sure that it is the white clover. The flowers can be eaten raw. They could be dried and used to make a tea. It was traditionally used to purify and cleanse the blood also. So here I just want to show you a close-up image view of the chevrons on the white clover. You can see these well-defined grooves and so you definitely will not mistake it for a, any plant that is close to this one. Okay, So you can actually see the, the V lines close up on the the leaves. So this is the sycamore tree and the leaves are just coming out. So remember what the key benefits to derive these seeds when they become mature from the inside you could actually use them as fire starters you can actually but the key thing is you can actually use the sap of the sycamore tree to obtain syrup but for emergency purpose it's not as efficient as in the case of the maple syrup but it will take much more to get this done but as i said for emergency situations this could be a source of water and so here is a seed from the last you see the fluff so these are pretty much good fire starters you can use these for your here's another one okay and it's good to know that's one benefit we can use, do with the mature seeds. So the sap of the tree, if available, may be used to make syrup. And I said if available because I did try, no success. But one of the things could be that you know, now we're into the spring, so the timing perhaps was off. So I would want to we need to try it at the correct time. The bark has astringent properties and is used traditionally as a wash for skin problems. It's a great source of water in a time of emergency. And again, that is if with the right timing and so forth, it would need some experimentation. The mature seeds could be used as a fire starter. Let's now take a look at the sweet gum tree.
Uh, just want to show you this is a example of the young shoots of the leaves that are edible of the sweet gum tree felt this was a perfect time to show you as they just it's um, the spring is just starting so this is what it looks like and I know normally these are nightmares in the driver with all the the seeds that drop with the rough edges which can hurt your be your bare feet but you know there are many benefits to be derived from this plant so you could eat the seeds located in the pods it is a great source of protein and carbohydrates the sap of this plant could be dried and be used to make chewing gum the young and tender leaf shoots can be eaten raw. The leaves could be used as an antibiotic and for stings. The leaves also have antimicrobial and antiviral properties. The sap is anti-inflammatory, cold and cough suppressant, and anti-cancer. Next, we'll take a look at the wild plum. So here I'm showing you the field of wild plum. The long stretch of the wild plum plant. And again, these when they're really sun ripened, very tasty. Okay, here we can see the small plums, green plums. I'll provide you an update during the ripening season. They're just at the initial stages now. But it's great to be able to recognize these valuable plants. Here is another field of the wild plums. So we're going to have a bumper season of wild plums available. It's pretty awesome. So among these here we have some pears under here are some prickly pear. And we have a segment talking about prickly pear. This is one of the amazing plants with numerous medicinal benefits. You can also see some more hanging around here. I actually thought I saw some earlier with some fruits. Here they are. This fruit also possesses great benefits. You can see what it looks like inside. Even the seeds possess great medicinal values. So the fresh fruits of the wild plum are rich in flavonoids. It is best eaten when sun ripened. The food could be used to make jellies and jams. This is an example of the prickly pear cactus. The fruit is oftentimes referred to as tuna, which is also rich in antioxidants. The seeds can be eaten. Here's one that I had opened earlier. Okay, so the seeds can be eaten and it's best you can all blend it up as a drink or in a smoothie and that's one of the best ways to do it. As a matter of fact, you can blend all of this up, even the, the, the cactus itself. Okay. 
Now there are not much thorns here in these, but normally to remove the thorn, what you would pretty much do is you can use a lighter and burn those thorns off and you're good to go. This is the one of the prickly pear that I recently planted. So I'm hoping to see good results from that. So you see, as opposed to the one, there can be a various sizes. Look at these smaller ones here. Now we have some showers of blessings coming down now. So that's my cue to end things right here. But just want to show you an example of what it would look like here. So the prickly pear cactus had their various types of prickly pear. As a matter of fact, this official name given is one of the Mexican type. Now the fruit, the cactus itself and the seeds provide numerous health benefits. The fruit is rich in vitamin C and antioxidants. There are numerous publications on the proven benefits of cactus pear. And I'm hoping to present some of these numerous benefits in another presentation as it's a really long list of benefits listed in publications where the oils, for instance, the oils of the seeds were tested and used for um, treat a number of uh, various issues. And so I'll, I'll be, I'm excited about future discussions of the prickly pear cactus. So our next plant is the live leaf sage. So here is one of the live leaf sage I have growing here at the homestead. Notice the unique features. It has these bell trumpet type flowers. It's like a light purple flowers. The leaves veins are purple. But and sometimes the entire leaf could be purple, but I'm not sure the reason for the variation in colors from locate from location to location. But this is pretty much the color we have here at the homestead. Also, notice it has a square stem, and and plants that has a square stem are members of the mint family. Now it is said that it's it's somewhat a mild mint. Okay, so it's not as strong as the, the mint we're accustomed to, but it has some mildness to it. So the lye leaf sage, the leaves could be eaten raw or cooked, and as previously mentioned, it's a member of the mint family as evident by the square stems or rectangular stems. The leaves were commonly used as laxative and as cough suppressant. The roots was used to heal wounds. It has clusters of light purple flowers. It is hairy. The veins are purple. Now the leaf has variations of purple depending on where it's located. So the next plant is the bull or spurge nettle, and please don't let this one touch you, it surely hurts. But it has some benefits. So the bull nettle, its roots are edible roasted, baked or boiled. Once cooked, you would have to remove the peel and the inner core, which is ex extremely difficult to chew, the remaining parts you could eat. The plant is covered with stinging hair, so caution must be taken.
The next plant we would like to look at is the cut leaf primrose. So the cut leaf in even in primrose, um, the roots, the leaves, stems, and flowers are edible. It has this cross-like shape that appears at the center of the mature flowers. It may be a source of minerals and vitamins. Traditionally, the leaves or roots were used to heal external wounds, and the root was also used for upset stomach. <laughs> 